That's me, Gronk. Last Super Bowl, I missed the FanDuel kick of destiny. The kick is up. It's no good. He missed it. And it's haunted me ever since. I don't kick. I catch. Because it wasn't enough for me to do a normal Super Bowl commercial like all those other retired athletes. No, I had to be a big shot, a hero. So I'm going to the land of second chances, Vegas. And this time you won't miss. Get in. FanDuel Kick of Destiny 2 coming live Super Bowl Sunday, only from America's number one sports book. Unbelievable. Rob Gronkowski is here, the star of that commercial. You're just kicking it with Chubbs Peterson, a.k.a. Carl Weathers? Yes, I was. It was a dream come true when I heard that Chubbs Peterson was going to be shooting with myself and that he was <laughs> going to be my coach this year. For Kick of Destiny 2, let me tell you, I got super excited. Happy Gilmore is one of my favorite movies, if not my favorite movie of all time. So, Chubbs Peterson, thank you for teaming up with me. It's all on the kick. It's all on the kick. I can't wait to see it. Are you are you mentally prepared? What has been the process? You know, there's a Super Bowl, uh, you know, rebound situation. Like, you get down in the dumps. You can't go back and win if you lose. You lost last year. Where's your mentality at? Yes, yeah, so I was devastated last year. I gave it all all that I had. Um, I'm telling you, yeah. I let America down, but it's like I'm going to bounce back, just like when we lost to the uh, Philadelphia Eagles in the Super Bowl. Next year, we bounce back, and we beat the Los Angeles Rams in the Super Bowl in Atlanta. So it's going to be the same type of bounce back this year. I'm going back to back, and this year I'm going to make it for America, and I'm going to make it for all my fans out there. Gronk said he could make it for America last year. He's going to try some different things this year. Maybe it's a different location. They were out of Arizona. We're in Vegas for the Super Bowl. It's happening during the Super Bowl. It's happening live. And you, FanDuel customers, fans of Gronk, whoever, you can pick whether Gronk is going to make or miss the second chance at the kick for their chance at an equal share of $10 million in bonus bets. It's a lot of money. Uh, how's your prep going to be different this time around? You know, my confidence was down a little bit, but I'm back out there on the field. I'm practicing basically every other day. I'm just building up the strength of my leg. I actually mm. been hitting some 35 yarders, some 40 yarders. I want to be able to hit a 50 yarder before I go out there and I have to do kick of destiny too. And it's only going to be 25 yards, but I want to be really, really confident that I can make a kick from anywhere on the field from the 50 yard line and in because it'll just feel good. It'll boost my confidence that, confidence that much more. So I'm going to be ready to go through practice. It takes practice to build that confidence up. What do you say to those who are selecting you to miss the 25-yarder? Oh, man, you know, there's a lot of people out there that want to see me fail. They always want to see you fail. <laughs> I love to see the haters, but if you're going to pick okay. miss this year, you're not going to get a piece of that $10 million in bonus bets. That's all I got to say. Tell me about filming that commercial. I believe we had you on that day. It was when Will Ferrell came on, and you, like, literally could not talk, Gronk. And I'm hearing you in this commercial, though. It kind of works because you're, like, downtrodden walking around the desert. <laughs> it really works because I'm all beat up walking from Arizona to Vegas, land of second chances. But if you ask me, I think it's the land of sins. But I'm going to be a good guy <laughs> while I'm in Vegas. And I'm not going to sin because I'm going to make this kick for yeah. America. And that's not sinning. That's helping people out get bonus bets. But at the same time, my voice, you, when you see the third commercial come out week three of the playoffs, it's because it's the training montage commercial. And I was <laughs> screaming. I was getting everyone hyped up. And then the next day, we shot that commercial. So therefore, I had no voice. But it went really well because I'm supposed to be beat up walking from well, freaking 3,000 miles from Arizona yeah. to Vegas. I, however <laughs> I never know if you're supposed I don't know if you were supposed to tell us that we're getting a commercial in the third week of the Yeah, well, playoffs. one already dropped, so uh, they don't get to see it. There's no sneak peek, but uh, there's no sneak peek. Now, week yeah. three. I hear there's another cameo potentially. Let's not let's not talk about it, but it should all be very exciting. I can I can tell I can tell you are more confident going into this one. We see you haters, and you can you guys can go to Fanduel, uh, go to the sports book, go to Fanduel.com, and pick uh, whether or not he makes or misses. I'm on Team Make. I hope I'm there uh, leading up to the Super Bowl. It's going to be must see action uh, with ten million dollars, like Gronk is saying, on the line. Let's get to some NFL stuff, my friend. Rabel. 
out. Initial thoughts, go. Very, very shocked when I heard the news that he was fired. I thought that he would be possibly traded uh, so the Tennessee Titans can get some value. But uh, I've heard he was ha having a little beef with the front office. That's all I've, I've heard because he's definitely not fired for his performance as a football coach. I mean, he's a great coach. He's a hot commodity right now on the market. Uh, teams are definitely going to hit him up to be the next head coach of their organization. Uh, but let me tell you, very, very shocking and very surprising. He's out. We know you've made it very clear. You think Bill stays in New England, and it's not just you. We have a month. It's it's you. It's Shane Vereen. It's Julian Edelman. It's Ninkovich. It's every Patriot that's ever come across this these airwaves. Um, hypothetically speaking, though, would Vrabel, just with the connective tissue, longtime Patriot, all of that, does he fit here? Yes, uh, Coach Mike Vrabel definitely fits the mold of being a head coach of the New England Patriots. I feel like he checks all the boxes. He has some experience as well as being a head coach um, of the Tennessee Titans for six years. He knows how to handle NFL players. He knows how to relate to them. He knows about the history of the Patriots organization as well, being a legendary player there, playing both offense and defense. He knows what it takes to get the job done. So I think he fits the mold. It's just if... Coach Belichick and Mr. Robert Kraft move on from each other. That's the only way it's going to happen of Vrabel going to New England. And if you're Kraft, we had this conversation last week, like, is Vrabel and his team plays for him and he's feisty, like, is he a better option than Bill Belichick? I don't think so. And there's something against Vrabel. I just think if you're weighing both of those, the institutional knowledge, the comfortability of Bill, it's not a thing. It's all coming down to this, like, conversation between Kraft and Belichick and how it's being played out in the media. And, you know, Bill's saying, I'm just here. I have a contract. I want to do this next day. Can you take me a little bit inside of just your experience? And you have a lot. I know everything's sort of shut down up there. But what is that? Take me, help me understand the relationship of Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick as it stands. I mean, I know they got a strong relationship. I mean, they've been working together for over two decades now. That's for sure. Um, I would say there's a little tension throughout the years, just like any organization, because football is a stressful game from A to Z, from the top of the organization, the coaches to players. But uh, in the end, they both want to win. They both want to be champions. And I can see them having a conversation and them trying to both figure it out because they don't want to start over. I mean, mm. they're both in a great position. They're both winners. And why start over when they can figure something out? I would say take their egos away and have a conversation. And if I think Coach Belichick can get some help within the organization and let up a role as, for example, the role of being a GM yeah. and bring someone in, in to be the GM and Coach Belichick approves who the GM is and let them bring all the players in and Coach Belichick can just focus on coaching. Just imagine how good of a coach he could be if he just truly focuses on the players that are out on the field then instead of worrying who he, got, who he has to bring in. I think that's how they're going to settle this. They're going to bring a different GM in, and Coach Belichick is just going to coach the crap out of his players and be a, a well-solid team next year. That would be the dream. What you're saying is, like, get help, relent. Yes. But you know Bill Belichick. Be real with me. How much faith do you have that he can set aside that part of his very healthy ego and do that effectively. I don't have much faith because they would have done it a long time ago. I have much faith. I mean, because he had a proven track record when he was doing it. I mean, he's getting a little bit older now. Maybe just you can't handle the role because of the age now. I mean, there's a lot going on in life. And uh, just, you know, as you get older, yeah. you, you slow down a little bit. Yeah. I would still be playing if I wasn't slowing down as I was getting older. So, uh, but you I are feel still like playing. You're kicking, that. Gronk. You're you're, pl you're yeah. playing in the Super Bowl, Gronk. That's why I'm kicking now and not actually playing as a player because I've slowed down a little bit. But in his press conference on Monday, okay. it kind of showed me a different perspective of Coach Belichick. It kind of like he let that you know, let himself be and said, basically said, I will be here. I will, I want to be here and I will do whatever it takes for me to be here and be the coach <laughs> of the New England Patriots next year. And that means, Hey, get some help, bring some help in, bring a GM in so he can just focus on the players that are out on the field and just coach them. I love that that's how you see it, and I'm such a cynic that I see a person who wants to get fired and collect all of his money and then go get hired and paid by someone else. I mean, I don't think he's at that point. He has money. He's been coaching for 20-plus years. He's been paid 
very well, tremendously over his yeah. time, uh, his career with New England. So I don't think money plays a factor into this at all. I think it's happiness of where he wants to be. And I feel like he's happy in New England and, and doesn't really want to start over. What do you want to say to Matthew Slater today? Oh, yes. Matthew Slater, man, congratulations uh, on an unbelievable career if you retire. He hasn't retired yet, okay. correct? Okay. Uh, if he retires, okay. Matthew Slater, you were the captain. You were the man. You were the guy that was the gel in the locker room from the morning to, you know, in the afternoon to before practices to after games. Thank you, Matthew Slater. Well-deserved. Uh, just every honor that you are going to receive post-career. Mm -hmm. You're a great guy on the field, off the field. You're not just a great football player, but you're also a better guy. Slate, congratulations on a wonderful career, if you call it quits, my man. Oh, my man. God. What is it with you New England gentlemen and your inability to make a decision? Tom, Bill now's in, out, little, little, little craft. I don't know. Do I want him to win? You, uh, Slater. I think Julian took a minute. Danny's running around doing stuff in the NFL. What What is so hard about walking away? All right. I'll tell you this. What's so hard about walking away? Coach Belichick always engraved in us, hey, don't make a decision a week or two after the season. Ooh. Because the emotions are flying high. The emotions are the emotions right there. They haven't settled in yet. Take your time, let everything settle in. Don't just, you know, make a decision based off of what happened the day before Got or it. what happened that season. Let yourself calm down, relax, go on a little vacation, and then go from there and see what you really want in life. Okay, you just gave really good insight on where Bill is right now. That's the advice that he's always given you. I'm sure that's what Bill is doing. He's taking it day by day onto Cincinnati style, and he'll see how he maybe feels in a couple of weeks. That was very insightful. Where do you think Vrabel should go, if not New England? Oh, man, if he doesn't go to New England, I mean, I, I feel like he's a coach that wants to be coaching in the NFL right now. He's young. He's got a lot of energy. He's ready to go. Raiders, Chargers, uh, Washington, Falcons, Panthers open right now. I don't think the Panthers, no. I would say maybe possibly Washington. That would be a good, great place okay. for him. And also the Los Angeles Chargers, I feel like, would be a great scenario for him as well. I'd love to see that. All right, we got big games. We got we got this wild, super wild card weekend, which gives us this kind of, in my opinion, and I'm a company gal, I love the NFL, this icky Monday night game. Not a fan. Whoever wins gets a short week on the other end. I want three games, three games. Give me two days of football and I'm done. But Monday night, it's these banged up quarterbacks. So I guess they have an extra day to heal, which is nice. Baker's hurting. Jalen Hurts is hurting. It's Eagles. It's Bucks. Uh, you know, it sounds like both are a go to play in this one. FanDuel Sportsbook has fairly favored in this one. Um, let's talk about, gosh, this is not this is not what I wanted to even talk about with you. Let's talk to, uh, about this game because you, my friend, let's refresh your memory. Your Bucks team. Team. You didn't win the division in 2021, but your last touchdown was scored in this matchup, right? Yes, it was. My last career touchdown was scored versus the Philadelphia Eagles. I think it was uh, the wild card weekend yep. in the playoffs my last year. I think, what was that, 2021? That's right. Yes. So you yeah, scored, so I mean, you. by the way, that was, can we see that again? That ha Is that voted most wide open touchdown of your entire career? Yes, I think it was. I appreciate the Philadelphia Eagles. What is me, this? By letting me score my most wide open touchdown of all time and my last touchdown of my career. Thank you to the Eagles. It's going to, I feel like this game is going to be kind of the same scenario again. I think the Buccaneers are going to come away with a win in Tampa Bay as well. Wild card weekend. Why do you think that? Break it down for me. You know this matchup. You know this Bucks team very well. And you've lost a Super Bowl to this Eagles team that likes being an underdog historically. Yes, Tampa Bay, they're, they're kind of hot right now. Yes, they're a little bit inconsistent, but it's a home game for them as well. Mike Evans and Baker Mayfield, I think they're going to turn it up a notch a little bit as well. Same with Chris Godwin. He's going to come through and make some big plays for the team. But the Eagles, I don't think they can, you know, continue, you know, their success that they had from beginning of the season. I think they took a kind of a fart downhill the last five games. They lost four of their last five or, or five of their last six or whatever. I don't think they can pick up the slack from where they left off at the end of the season. I think it's like, it's kind of like engraved in them right now. There's something going on. There's some energy going around that organization that's holding them back. The Bucks organization, which you won a Super Bowl with, and I know that you like the people in that building. Baker was asked about how he handled this year on the way to their division win. And he said, I learned how to handle, I really like the answer. I learned how to handle adversity better. And he said, I've been surrounded in this organization by great people who are helping me do that. 
What is it about this organization with this Bucks team? Obviously, you've got your players in there, your veterans, Levante, you've got Mike Evans, all of that. What, like, I'm not, I'm not comparing it to the Patriots, but Tom left the Patriots, and it's been what it is. And you look at like Tom leaving, leaving the Bucks, and here they are winning the division. Yes, Baker's baking this year. It was great to see him have his best career season statistically over uh, over his career. Uh, at first, when he was with the Browns, I, I feel like I wasn't even that big of a fan of him. Um, I feel like he like he wasn't taking coaching in. He feel like he had all the answers. And I'm a big fan of him now, just the way that he's representing himself with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think the best career thing that ever happened for him was going to the Los Angeles Rams last year and being under Coach McVay and getting coached by Coach McVay, a Super Bowl champion, um, and, you know, getting those – getting that experience under his belt, what it takes, you know, to prepare and be a champion. And then him going to the Buccaneers and getting a, a truly a second chance and reviving his career. Mm -hmm. And now he's going to possibly sign a huge contract. So Baker, congratulations on a great career, man. Listen, uh, he's, on, he's on a one, he's on a one year, four, I believe $4 yeah. million dollar contract. I looked at it this morning. Has Tampa found their Tom Brady replacement long-term? I think they have. I think he's going to be with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for quite some time. I think they're going to sign him to a long-term deal because um, it's going to be a team-friendly deal as well. I don't think he's going to, you know, expect to get the contract of 50 plus million dollars mm -hmm. at a quarterback, but I think they can sign him to a team-friendly deal, uh, whatever the range is, and then uh, build a strong team from there. <laughs> My producer just texted me. I don't think he likes Baker Mayfield. He never talks him up. And then you just went on a whole yeah. thing about talking about Baker Mayfield and all of that. What, what do I do with this? What am I supposed to think about this Eagles team in this free fall? And like, with your thoughts on this, because it is a team that, you know, I've been saying for weeks now, dig deep. You guys like being the underdog. I mean, you lost at the hands of them. Like, what, what is going on? I mean, we've kind of saw this coming from the beginning. They were like 10 and 0 or whatever, but everyone was still saying like the Philadelphia Eagles are not that good of a team. And then they finally showed it at the end of the season all the blunders that they were ha having, and then they were losing games because of it. I mean, they were sneaking by, literally sneaking by from the very beginning of the season when they beat the Patriots in, at Gillette Stadium week one, and they barely squeaked by them, and then they were squeaking by the whole time. And then uh, finally they had that crash course, uh, but – I mean, they're going to have to pick it up. They're going to have to get their offensive going. That's for sure. They got to get A.J. Brown involved and get the run game going where their offensive line is dominating the defensive line if they want to get that, uh, that spark going again. Grok, we're going to take a short break. We've got more with Rob Gronkowski. He's ready for the kick of destiny. We're going to get some more uh, out of Gronk on a super wild card weekend. Um, and we do have a guest for you, somebody that you liked growing up. I like it. Do I know them personally? That I don't know. Back on Up and Adams, Rob Gronkowski joining us. I'm a little frustrated today, Gronk. Tell me a joke or something. What do you What do you got? Why are you frustrated? Got lots going on. You know, it's just a workflow wins championships kind of stuff going on here. But it's okay. We're working it out. I want to ask you about wild, Super Wild Card Weekend. You didn't have a lot of experience playing on Wild Card Weekend. Uh, obviously, with Tampa, you did. But I want to ask you about the Browns and the Texans. Kind of a tough, listen, you said all year long, CJ Stroud, Offensive Rookie of the Year, you were in on this cat, like, let's go. Not super easy, though. Like, your first playoff action is going to be up against the number one defense in all of the land, which is sort of wild. Um, we're looking at the odds down here right now. But the Browns beat the Texans in Week 16. The problem is, and I talked to Joe Thomas about this, Browns legend yesterday. CJ Stroud didn't play in that this in that game. Is it a good thing for CJ that the Browns have not seen him? Uh, yes. I mean, you're going to want to work everything into your favor, so you want to play into that. You want to play into the role of CJ Stroud not playing versus the Browns them losing, so it builds up confidence. Hey, CJ Stroud wasn't our quarterback then. That's why we lost the game. So uh, it's going to give them that type of confidence. We got CJ Stroud. We're going to win now. So, uh, yeah, I, I look at it like that. Did you win your first playoff game? Uh, my first playoff game, I actually did not. Uh, we had a bye week. Actually, I, I really don't have that much experience with wild card weekend yeah. because the first nine seasons in New England, I had nine bye weeks going into <laughs> the playoffs. That's absurd. Okay, that is absurd to have nine bye weeks. <laughs> 
Thursday night. But uh, my very first playoff game is actually a very unfortunate situation. I lost to the New York Jets <laughs> in our, my first playoff game. Yes, I, I can't believe you just brought that up, Kay. That was not cool. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know Hamilton just texted me. He lost to the Jets in his first. I, I didn't think you won. So what advice would you give? And I like that you're saying it is sort of nice for, for CJ. The Browns. This Browns team has not seen him yet. Um, you know, part of me thinks like it would have been better to sort of get his feet wet against this defense. But the playoffs, as it's always described to me, they re it really is a different animal. Like the regular season does not matter, even though it was week 16 not that long ago. What advice would you give, knowing you lost your first playoff game, to the, what do you call it, like poop green Jets team that you don't like so much? Yeah. What advice would you give CJ going into this one? Uh, treat this game just like any other game. I mean, don't, you know, overthink it at all. I mean, it's it's the game of football. Once you start playing from the first snap, it's just like playing any other regular season game. So don't overthink. That's number one. And then number two, go out there and have fun. It's a game of football. And also, they're at, they're at home. It's Houston. Uh, they're in Houston. So he's got his home, home fan base around him. It's not like he's going on the road. It's going to be super loud. So he can do his thing on offense. But just overall, C.J. Stroud, go out there and just don't overthink and have fun and like you've been doing. And I will say the Browns' defense, Miles Garrett and all, they have not been as formidable on the road as they have been on home. So we're saying there's a chance. You picked the Cowboys to win the Super Bowl. They got these pesky little Packers. They, that got their quarterback for the next 20 years, I'm sure. In Jordan Love, they also have a healthy Aaron Jones back in the mix that hopefully stops, you know, the game flow and the game script and keeps CeeDee Lamb, who might be the best player in the NFL, off of the field for most of it. Do the Packers have a chance in this one? On the road. I don't think the Packers have a chance. The Dallas Cowboys, they're home. They have not <laughs> lost at home this whole entire year, which is unbelievable. They're number two seed. I picked them to win the Super Bowl or go to the Super Bowl this year, okay? Because I told you, yep. the, uh, the Dallas Cowboys were going to be solid this year. They're going to be a great team. And uh, they added Stephon Gilmore, which has been a tremendous help. And they also added Brandon Cooks. And that's why I picked the Dallas Cowboys to win, because I know I played with both of those players. I know both of them have what it takes to go to the next level. And they've been showing that. But I don't think Green Bay Packers, I think they're too young and too inexperienced still. They're going to be great in the future, but they just won't be able to pull it off in Dallas week uh okay let's play a little game you're doing the kick of destiny we're running it back it's going to happen during the super bowl in las vegas we thought it'd be a perfect time everybody can go and decide whether or not they think you're going to make or miss it i'm going to give you a storyline or a phrase or a sentence or something and you're going to tell me make or miss you buying it you're not buying it sunday on fox you were asked which one team you'd least want to face in the wild card round you said buffalo bills make or miss josh allen and the bills have the easiest matchup this weekend, taking on the Steelers, who are TJ Wattless. I think that's a miss. I think the Pittsburgh Steelers, they're red hot right now as well. They're kind of in the same similar uh, situation as the Bills, winning all the games to be able to get in at the end of the regular season to get into the playoffs. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they love to play dirty football. They love the game of ground and pound. The weather is going to be favored for the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's going to be snowy, rainy, windy, cold. That's going to make it an even game. It's not going to be easy for the Buffalo Bills. Mm, speaking of rainy and cold, Arrowhead's supposed to be blistering for rigid. Make or miss. What are the chances? Or, or the, uh, Make or miss, Travis Kelsey will show up and play like prime peak Travis Kelsey, ha finally having that long-awaited big game that we've been looking for all year. I would say that's a make uh, due to the fact he took off last week, which is huge. I mean, he's been a busy guy. Mm -hmm. He's been on 20 commercials. He's been all over <laughs> the place in the media. Let me tell you, to get that time off from a game, to just sit there, settle, let your central nervous system just chill out and relax and not have to worry about going out to play a game and get refreshed, I think he's going to hit that point of being re uh, rejuvenated, re-energized, and have a big game this weekend. I keep hearing sub-zero temps there. Big deal not big deal not a big deal kansas city they're used to that i think that's a big deal for the miami dolphins also big advantage for the chiefs big advantage for the chiefs i mean i wouldn't be surprised make or miss would you be surprised if they're in the super bowl again uh yeah i would be so what's that a make i don't know it was like i don't know i just was asking you really like if they, they get the dolphins like it's patrick mahomes like being the best quarterback in the league matters is he the best quarterback in the league get there 
Yeah, she is one of the, the top three quarterbacks for sure. Probably maybe possibly the best quarterback in the league, Patrick Mahomes. But uh, their inconsistency this year, I just don't see them. They didn't pick it up at all. The drops throughout the whole year, all the way to the last regular season game, you just all of a sudden don't hit a switch. I mean, it happens over time throughout regular season. And if it doesn't click by the end of the last game, I don't think it's going to click into the playoffs. I think they're just a little bit inconsistent right now to not be able to get to the Super Bowl. We'll see if they can make it, you know, playoff mentality. Maybe Patrick takes over. The only way I can see it. But he's been in so many Super Bowls. Before that, it was Tom Brady. There's like one Super Bowl I can think of that one of them wasn't in it. So to me, it's just will yourself to it when you get there. Make or miss. Lions head coach Dan Campbell should have rested his starters last week since they had a 95 chance to stay in the three seed, which would have prevented Sam Laporta from getting hurt against the Vikings. That's a tough situation because you did have a 5% chance of missing the number three seed, like you just said, and you don't want to take those chances. Anything can happen in the NFL. Those 5% chances can turn into 100% somehow, some way. You see it happen all the time. I think it was fair that he started his starters. Yes, it's unfortunate. Sam Laporta, one of the best rookie sensation tight ends in the history of the game, got hurt. That's tough to see. Uh, you don't want to see that happen, but I think it was fair that he started his starters. Who do you think wins that game? Is Sam Laporta out officially for this week? I don't know. I don't. I don't know that he's been ruled out officially. I know we've been, we've been trying to get him to come surprise you on the show, and his schedule has been bananas. But no. But uh, but is he like that big? He's the he's the factor for you. Like if he plays, do the Lions win? Who are they facing again? The Rams. You don't have yeah, the Rams. Oh, man, the Rams are red hot. They're so they good. Were it's a season because they're so young. And then Coach McVay finally got them to gel because he's yeah. such a great coach. And Matthew Stafford being so old, I guess he finally recognized how he could hang out with these young bucks. So then they started, <laughs> uh, you know, connecting all over the place. Yeah. But, uh, uh, man, I think that's going to be a great game. That really is. And plus, Math Matthew Stafford going back to Detroit for a playoff game. Oh, and and. Jared Goff playing his former team, the Rams. Wow, that's going to be a fun one to watch. I think it's going to be a close one, but uh, Detroit, just because they're home. I know, they're home, and I feel like it's going to – I really feel like it's going to be one of the best atmospheres in, in recent or total NFL history. They've been waiting so long, Gronk. They have a home playoff game. It's just going to be absolute madness there. I can't wait. And yes, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for all the matchups, actually. There's really no matchup this week that's not a headline or not like a true yeah. blowout. I think they're all great games. They truly are. And then we'll have um, also, yeah, I think we're going to have Calvin Johnson on the show Friday previewing that from a Stafford perspective, obviously from a Detroit perspective. But I think he's going to get a nice standing ovation from everybody when he walks into the door. Um, let's see. Last one for you. Oh, let's do this. Let's, let's make or miss uh, a Kay and Rob no sweat same game partly. Let's do it. Let's make this one. You and I have some work to do. Uh, let's do it. Let's hit up a parlay. Let's cook up a winner. Who you got for your first leg? I think we wrote it. Yeah, you got it? All right, I'm going to go with Jared Goff to have over 225 yards passing. All right, Jared Goff, lost to prove in this one. I think he has that. But everybody keep your eye on um, Sam Laporte, of course. I'm going to go Amon Ross St. Brown. Anytime touchdown. He scored in four straight uh, seven of the last nine, and if Laporta doesn't go or is hobbled, he will be the dude. I'm going to go with an anytime touchdown as well, but with a player on the Rams on the offensive side, and that's Kyrene Williams. Yeah. Whenever he has a big game, the Rams have a great chance of winning. Very Todd Gurley Super Bowl-esque vibes out of Kyron Williams. I agree with you. He's been an absolute stud. Young player, so fun, him and Puka. Um, and I will go with, let's do Matthew Stafford vibe here. Let's go 250-plus. I feel like it's going to be a high-scoring game. I know that, you know, the Lions, whatever. It's going to be a high-scoring game. So I think 250 is easy, back and forth. And Stafford is thrown for 250 yards or more in five straight games. So to recap, Rob's got Jared Goff throwing 225-plus. I've got Amon Ross St. Brown. Anytime touchdown, Rob likes Kyron Williams for the same thing. And I'm finishing it off with Stafford throwing for 250-plus. And all FanDuel customers can place a no-sweat same game parlay every day of games. Playoff action is here, guys. Head over to FanDuel. Put up a three-leg SGP every day during the playoffs, and you will get bonus bits back if it doesn't hit. No sweat is the way we like it here uh, on Up and Adams with the Gronkster. All right.